Olá amigos, first of all, I want to say that I was missing to make these videos so much. In the past six months, my life changed a lot. We moved to a different city and then we got back to Florianopolis. I changed jobs twice and then here we are. All these changes, they are about my professional career. Now I'm officially working as a historian in the government of the city where I live, Florianopolis. The good part is that now I'll have better conditions to make more videos like these. Uh, but uh, I will probably focus more on the history of the city where we live now, which is very interesting, I promise you. I hope you guys like this recent news and its changes. Now let's get to our video. Do you have any idea what a Swedish photographer, a very wealthy American businessman and a conflict, a war that happened in South Brazil in the beginning of the 20th century have in common? I bet you don't. So come with me and let's check this video about Clary Jensen and the Contestado War. Today I want to tell you guys about the life of the Swedish photographer who lived in Brazil in the late 19th century and the mid 20th century. His name was Claudio Jensen. I was studying about his life and work during my research to get my master's degree. Basically, during my research, I used some of his photos to explain how history teachers can take historical sources, in this case, pictures, historic pictures, to teach their classes and explain how the historical knowledge works, how it happens, right, using historic sources during classes. And the photos taken by Claudio Jensen are particularly interesting because he photographed a war that happened in the state, in this state that I, that I live, which is the Santa Catarina state. It was a war between the government and the locals and the wealthy elite who lived in the in the interior part of this state. So it was it was a really big conflict and he was there taking photos, registering everything. Actually I don't want to explain too much about this uh, this story right now because I want to save it for a future video video. Uh, you know, so far, I just wanted to know that Claro was this photographer who was in this war, who taken many important and impressive pictures, but he didn't just photograph it, this, this historic event, he also participated in many other important events of our Brazilian history, which is very, very interesting. He, he took photos of uh, a revolution or a political coup, as you, <laughs> as you prefer, uh, in 1930s. Uh, he also, he, he even photographed Theodore Roosevelt, the American, the former American president, who was traveling in our state once in the early uh, 1920s. Basically, he, he was in the right place, in the, in the right time with his camera and, and produced a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, important, important pictures. So, as you can see, Claro was a very interesting spectator of our Brazilian history. And today I decided to bring someone very special to talk about him. Someone who can explain more about Claro Jensen than myself. I'm talking about one of his grandsons, Paulo Moretti, who is also a guardian of his heritage. So I did this uh, little interview with uh, Mr. Moretti, and then I want to share it with you guys. I hope you enjoy it. First of all, Mr. Moretti, 
Thank you for agreeing to give us this interview. It's an honor for me to ask you these questions, not just because you are one of the guardians of Clarus Heritage, alongside with your cousin Ginger Jensen, but also because you helped me a lot explaining these things, explaining about Clarus' life, uh, things that I didn't understand very much during my research, and also giving information about your grandfather's photos and life. Before we start, I'd like you to introduce yourself. Hello, Angelo, folks. My name is Paulo. I am 62 and I live in Brazil, in Sorocaba City, Sao Paulo State. I'm an engineer and my interest in history began with my grandpa's photos, which I preserved a lot of the original with me. My cousin, Jandira, has the negatives yet today. She lives in Itarare, a nice little city in the south of our state. Thank you very much, Mr. Moretti. May you tell us how did your grandfather end up in Brazil with his family? The five Jansson brothers came to Brazil in 1891, accompanying their father, Anders Jansson, and their stepmother. There were just one daughter, Anna, who stood in Sweden. We know a lot of those days because Anna kept with her the letters she received from her pa and brothers. She was the elder and was the last to die in 1972. Aunt Anna moved to Brazil with her husband and daughter in 1909, but they returned back to Sweden about one year later. You say that one of his sisters, Anna, stayed in Sweden, right? One of the most precious sources of Clara's life are the letters he sent to her telling, telling about his life here in Brazil. What kind of things did he usually write in those letters? In other words, how did he describe his life in Brazil? In those letters, we read about the news from the family life in Brazil. The letters from Claro, or Klaas Gustav in Swedish, were very interesting because he describes many details of the new things he, then a young boy, was seeing in his new country. He experimented a lot of adventures here, including he was in the city of Lapa in Paraná State when occurred the famous Lapa Siege, a bloody chapter in the Brazilian history. Claro was forced to engage in the Brazilian army, but he evaded with his horse and ran off to his father's home as fast as he could. That is a quite a story. I still remember when I read about it for the first time. Now I want to make three questions at once. Photography wasn't Clara's first occupation, right? So how did he start it at his job? My second question is, what were his favorite themes? And the things that he, he liked to photograph the most. And the, the third question is, what were the most important events Claro registered in his photos? He tried a lot of jobs just when I arrived at Brazil. Before being a photographer, he was chief of explorers' teams whose main task was to exploit mate herbs in the southern forests. He started to photograph because he wanted to send photos from Brazil to his sister Anna, and there were almost no photographer here in those days. So, he discovered a new good way to win the life taking photos. Then, uh, about 1907, he imported machines and photo materials to begin a new business to deal. In this period, Claro lived in Barracón, a little city in Argentina near the Brazilian frontier. He began taking photos for the persons of the city. Soon after, he began to keep images of the lifestyle and the social events of this entourage and register every happening in those turbulent days. I think that the most important, or at least the more interesting event, was the Contestado War, what happened in Paraná and Santa Catarina states between 1912 and 1916. The photos of this war remaining inedit for decades just now by our family members, and these photos made Claro famous many years after he passed away. Nevertheless, there are lots of other interesting photos too, okay? That's amazing. You guys had a secret treasure with you all this time, right? One of the most interesting things I learned during our conversations was that Claro had a camera that could take pictures, create a three-dimensional effect. 
Can you tell us a little bit about this camera and the pictures he took with it? I have the 3D photo machine with me in good conditions yet today. It is a French camera of the Richard brand. It has two objective lenses which take two simultaneous images in just one glass negative. After revealing in a glass positive, we put this glass with the both images in a stuff called the stereoscopy and we can see the image in three dimensions. It was a popular and known uh, photo technique in Europe in the beginning of the 20th century and Claro made success with it by here too. Fantastic! I think that most people today never ever imagined that something like this, this kind of technology, existed 110 years ago. Mr. Moretti, we are approaching the end of our interview, but I want to ask you one last question. What is your favorite photo taken by Claro and, of course, why it is your favorite one? My favorite one, because it's spectacular, is an image of a train charged of Brazilian pine tree logs in a flooded area, so we cannot see the trails. The image is reflected in the calm water like a mirror. Wonderful photo taken in Trasbara city about 1920. Amazing. Thank you very much, Mr. Paulo Moretti, for giving us this interview. As I said in the beginning, it, it is an honor for me to tell you, my students and our followers, about Claro and his work. I have a particular fighting that is to give to Claro the recognizance his work deserves. There were many photos taken by Claro, published in books, reviews and videos, which do not give him the deserved credits. I am sure that this interview was a good opportunity to improve my fight. Thank you very much. So that's it. I hope you liked this video, guys. Uh, it was very important to me to, to produce it, to, to interview Mr. Moretti, especially because this year Contestad War is uh, completing 110 years so it's a very very uh, it's important video to me also i can't wait to make a video especially about the contest at war explaining it from the beginning to the end and and i'm also very excited to make more videos now i have more stability in my life uh, so don't forget to subscribe hit the bell and waiting for more videos Demais. I had to study about his life and work when I, I was studying about his life and my master's degree. Basically, in my research, I used some of his photos to explain how teachers, history teachers, can use sources, sources or uh, 